This is the gaming channel, and I will now proceed to, well, just talk about my third viewing of The Rise of Skywalker, because uh, I've been planning to watch The Rise of Skywalker for the third time for a while now, actually. Um, and I finally watched it, oh, when did I watch it? A few days ago on, was it a few days ago? Well, the start of this week on Disney+. Plus. Um, so I finally rewatched it then, because the... So yeah, so I watched it three times, because the first two times were at the cinema, and the third time was the time I just mentioned on Disney+, Plus earlier, um, I think at the start of this week. And yeah, I was thinking about doing a, a revised review, or a sort of, or, or really, what, what, what it is now, which is a third viewing thoughts video. I might end up repeating some points from my review, which you can check out in the description as well. Um... I'll probably refer to that as well, but uh, I'm just going to make some extra points that I didn't make in the review and be less biased, I, biased, I guess. Because I feel like the review was a bit a bit one-sided in a sense. It was a bit... It was, it was most, I would say it was mostly biased, but at the same time I did feel signif significantly happier about the, film after, about, about the film after the second viewing. But, uh, yeah, but anyway. So, after the third viewing, in all honesty... My opinion of the film hasn't actually changed that much. I still quite like it overall. I guess in a way, I guess you could argue in a way, Babu Frick perhaps isn't so bad, but I just feel like there's certain points where it's just... You might say or, say or do something stupid, and it's it's just stupid, basically. And it ends up being, it's just like, what, really? In a serious moment as well. It's like, like for example... Um, when Finn and when Finn, Ray, Poe, and C three PO, you know, were uh, uh, in that place, and C three PO is, uh, you know, being is being dealt with by Babu Freak. C three PO wakes back up, doesn't he? After Babu Freak operates on him, and then he wakes up with red eyes, and then he, you know, is able to reveal the location of the the second Sith Wayfinder. And then after that, he shuts down. And then Bobby Frick just, he sort of goes, he sort of um, almost says, he sort of says, hey, hey, or something like that. I don't know whether that's meant to be because, oh, they've got the information they need, but it was just seemed like a serious moment, and then C-3PO just shut down, and then it just seemed like, I don't know, it just seemed like the the, the timing was wrong with the humour, perhaps, and it just didn't. But maybe you could argue otherwise, I don't know, but... Anyway, that was just one thing, but I suppose, but I don't know, a bit, bit of a weird character, a bit, a bit, of, but I guess it, I guess Babu Frick is the comic relief character for that Star Wars film, you know, because in, in other films, for example, I mean, Jar Jar Binks was the comic relief character for episode one, um, and then in all honesty, not all the Star Wars films had comic relief characters, episode one was Jar Jar, um, I can't really, I'm not sure about episode two and three, actually. Episode 3 didn't really have a comic relief character. Episode 2, not really. Jar Jar has some screen time, but no, he wasn't so much a comic relief character there. And then, let's say episode 4, probably C-3PO, really, and maybe R2 as well, that sort of relationship. So they were sort of the comic relief characters, or mainly C-3PO in there. And maybe you could say, throughout the, the original trilogy, 4, 5 and 6, really, he was probably the main comic relief character. Apart from maybe the odd few who had little bits of screen time, maybe in episode six as well, like um, Salacious Crumb. Maybe BB-8, you could say, was the comic relief character in seven, in a way, perhaps. Um, and eight, maybe again, but not really. I suppose more so the Porgs. The Porgs, I guess. Um, and then in nine, like I say, um, Babu Frick, really. Yeah, Babu Frick. And maybe C-3PO in a way as well, I guess, because he had more screen time. I mean, some, I think it's pretty sure it's the most screen time he's had in the sequel trilogy. Um, and yeah, he gets to deliver a fair amount of humour, I guess, so you could argue that they're both comic relief characters, comic relief characters in that film. But anyway, that aside, like I said, my opinion of the film hasn't actually changed much. It hasn't changed much. I still quite like it overall for what it is. Um, I still find it quite fun and enjoyable and... There's a lot of good action, you know, for example. And I thought that it was interesting that Kylo is trying to turn Rey to the dark side so they can rule the galaxy together and take the Sith throne. 
he's trying to turn right and he's working for him throughout the film and it builds up to the two meeting on the death star you know ray finds the sith wayfinder and then she drops it after she you know seeing the um dark vision of herself and then you know Carla picks it up and as we know then they have a lightsaber duel which i think was one of my favorite scenes in the film personally i quite like the lightsaber duel I like how, for most of it, there's no music. I like that. It really seems like it's a high-stakes scene in the film, a high-stakes moment. It adds to the tension, to the atmosphere, the impact. You can tell there's a lot of danger involved, and you you might wonder, oh, what's going to happen, and this and that. And and you can just hear the, the water crashing down. You can hear everything else as well. And then only really the soundtrack, I think, towards the end. And essentially, in a way, she's using her anger against him. And it does seem like Ray wants to kill Kylo at that point. Um, but but Kylo does gain the upper hand in that duel, for once, for a change. Um, and in a way, he you know he has a right where he wants her. And she's using her anger, and in, I suppose it, see, it makes her become sloppy. It allows him to gain the upper hand. And it seems like in that lightsaber duel, they're actually dueling as equals. Because in The Force Awakens, for example, it seems like at first... Kylo has the upper hand, and then there's that turning point where Rey, uh, well, gains the upper hand and um, goes on the offensive, and then Kylo can do nothing about it. Um, I think she's, I think she is using the dark side at that point though as well. But anyway, yeah. So this time, Kylo has the upper hand. Um, there is a point where he's about to essentially strike her down, kill her, because it seems like Ray's using her anger and hatred against Kylo. It, I'd say it's a potential, or I'd say a likely factor that that, that helped Kylo in the duel as well, for sure. But yeah, you know, as we know, Ben's trying to kill Ray, and or he's about, perhaps about to, and then, as we know, Leia reaches out to him through the Force, and it causes Kylo to stop himself from killing Ray which then is the turning point, which allows Ray to impel Kylo with his own lightsaber after he drops it. And then they both sense, Kylo and Ray sense that Leia dies, sense her dying, and Ray force seals Kylo. Afterwards, Kylo turns back to the light before himself and Ray team up as Jedi to defeat Palpatine. So what ends up happening in the end is that Ray and Kylo do join forces, but as Jedi, not Sith. Because originally, Kylo intended for Rey to join him as Sith, but instead they end up joining forces as Jedi. I think even as Sith, they would have united to defeat Palpatine anyway, but they unite as Jedi, and they unite to defeat a common enemy, and both embrace the light side in the process instead, because at the same time, Rey is in danger of, I guess, turning to the dark, turning to the dark side in, in Episode 9, and, you know, she goes to Act 2, and she plans to basically give up and uh, go into exile on that planet. And she does tell Luke when his Force Ghost appears that that's what she's doing. She's doing what he did. But of course, you know, Luke has a conversation with her. And, and he basically snaps her out of that. And then she goes on her way to find Palpatine. I have to admit, actually, I did, st- I did still find it quite satisfying when Luke did lift his, his X-Wing out of the water, even as a Force Ghost. Because I, I think I mentioned this in the review, but... Okay, perhaps it could have been even better, like I say, and more satisfying had he lifted it out as his physical self, him being still him still being alive. But it was still quite satisfying with the soundtrack from episode five. Um and interestingly as well, it's important to note that in life he he couldn't lift the X Wing, but of course he was he was young in episode five and he was still training under Yoda. So in, in five, he could, in five when he was still alive, he could he couldn't lift the X-wing out of the water. But there are those factors to bear in mind that I just mentioned. While in death, as a Force ghost, he could lift his X-wing out of the water. In episode nine, I just thought it was interesting to know that in life he couldn't, but in death he could. And I'll just move on as well to the final battle between Ray and Palpatine. Because, well, I did still quite enjoy it, and there were some good moments, such as, like I said in the review, Palpatine performing that powerful lightning attack that struck all of those, or a lot of the resistance slash rebellion ships in the sky. I don't think it caused any to explode, and that could have been good if if it caused some of them to explode. It was a cool sound effect as well when he was using his lightning, it really showed that it was powerful. While it was a cool moment, maybe it would have been better and good had, had that happened. 
it was sort of a shame how, while Carlo did help Ray out, in a way, at points, he, he wasn't, it was, it was a bit, it was, it was a bit of a shame that he, that he didn't help Ray out, Ray de- actually defeat Palpatine, really. I mean, sure, he ended up defeat, he ended up killing the Knights of Ren, who, which is ironic because he created them, created the Knights of Ren and brought them together, um, and then he ended up killing them in the end as a Jedi. Apart from that and a few other things where he helps Ray and then joins her, Palpatine just then t- just takes him straight out of the confrontation so that he can't help her defeat Palpatine. I mean, I mean, sure, yes, Kylo was evil and it is meant to be up to Ray and, you know, and whatever, but it's a bit of a shame, really, because at the same time, Kylo was essentially manipulated by Palpatine, just like Anakin was. Maybe it could have been more satisfying because it did seem like the final battle between Ray and Palpatine was perhaps a bit short, I guess, because in the, all it was really... I mean, I don't know, maybe. You you could argue that. It's, it's, it's debatable, I guess. It's just that maybe it seemed a bit short. And then we have that moment where she hears the f- the voices of fallen Jedi from the past, dead Jedi from the past. Maybe we could have seen more of Palpatine's true power. I don't know. It could have been good, but... I still need to catch up on this and read up on this, but I have read a read, sort of scene and whatever that Palpatine in Nine's meant to be a clone, so I need to read up on that and find out more about that. But yeah, that's in case anyone didn't know too. It would have been cool if maybe after Ray said, and I am all the Jedi, after Palpatine, Palpatine said that he's all the Sith, it would have been good if after, if after she'd, she'd said that, that the... the, the, the it would have been good if the Force Ghosts of the Jedi who spoke to her appeared and they all defeated Palpatine together. That could have been good, I guess. Um, or it could have alternatively been good if Rey and Kylo defeated Palpatine together or if their roles were somewhat reversed in the respect that Palpatine takes Rey out, Rey out of the confrontation instead and Kylo defeats him. I guess it would have been different in a twist and maybe odd, I suppose, but... You know, could have happened. Maybe even him, Luke and Anakin all together. You know, three generations of Skywalker. I mean, it would have been fitting. Because, you know, they're they all affected by Palpatine. Kylo, Luke and Anakin. I suppose Kylo and Anakin for longer than Luke. But still, would have been good. And I guess satisfying as well. Or even those three, like I say, with Rey. I still quite like the plot overall. Which is what I probably said in more review as well. But, yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, I still quite like the plot. Um, on the whole. I guess when it comes to that moment where Chewie supposedly died, there must have, uh, there must have just been another ship out there, off camera or something. That's the thing, you see Chewie get taken, well, having to go into that ship, that First Order ship or shuttle, but but then it, but then a little bit of time passes and then you see the, you see a shuttle fly off and I suppose um, there's a presumption that Chewie is in that shuttle, but he isn't. But I mean, like I say, I say I still like the plot overall on the whole. Um, like I say, there's a few things where I feel like maybe it could have been different, more satisfying had it been like this and that. And but maybe the plot could have been quite different, and it would have been even better and more satisfying. Um, maybe, like I say, there could have been w- way more links to the rest of the saga and the prequel trilogy to really celebrate the saga, I guess, and pay homage to it. There's still a lot of stuff to do with episode 9 I need to catch up on and watch on YouTube, but I know there's, I think there's a lot of deleted scenes and probably stuff that never made it onto, onto film as well would have provided more links to the prequel trilogy, for example, which would have been good, but oh well. The score's good. From what I can remember, the only... The only soundtracks I could hear really from the rest of the saga were from, I think, Revenge of the Sith and I think the original trilogy. Really, there was a scene where there was, if you if you remember, there's that scene, um, that chase on Persona. They have jetpacks, the troopers do, and they're chasing after Ray, Finn, and Poe, and C-3PO, and Chewie, and BB-8. There's a, there's a point where they're going through this sort of it seems like a, it's almost like a sort of canyon or whatever. Anyway, it, it, it did remind me of the that part of the pod race from episode one related to that. Still quite like the film on the whole. Still like it for what it is. Don't get me wrong, you know, some things could have been different and this and that. And I would have liked to see. I would have liked to have seen certain things like what I mentioned. I mean, maybe even Anakin and Luke defeating the Emperor. 
in whatever form, or Anakin defeating him, maybe even coming back to defeat him, managing to return to the physical plane from the netherworld and defeating Palpatine, you know, because he was the one who was affected by Palpatine the most. It's just things that could have been that didn't happen, but like I say, I still quite liked it overall. So those are my thoughts concerning my third viewing of The Rise of Skywalker, aka Episode 9, and that is all.